So um, some of you know me better as Trish Monroe, um, and I was a former council member in Livermore, which is where I came to know this community. Um, and um, so, salam alaikum, um, and shukran for having me here. Um, and I just want to make clear, I'm not speaking on behalf of, a, of the Jewish community. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. Um, and just in the role of knowing how important it is for community to come together. Um, so with that, I want to start with just the grief for all the people that we have lost in the past six weeks. They were our parents, children, brothers, sisters, friends, community members. And in our sorrow and pain, it should not matter as we grieve who they were, how old they were, what kind of lives they lived, or how they died. What matters is that they are gone. Their absence leaves great holes where there was once someone to hold and share life with. So please take a moment and just breathe and mourn that loss. It is easy to take that grief and turn it to anger, whether justified or not. And I'm deeply aware of how different perspectives, all the differences that we have seen come forward in the last six weeks, how we turn away from each other and how we divide. And so I, I want us to find another path forward. I, I hope we can. And so I take from my tradition and as the th traditions here, all the Abrahamic traditions who are here represented, from the first chapter of the book of Genesis, Bereshit, it talks about the creation of humanity, male and female together, made B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God. We are, every single one of us, made in the image of God. And then in the last Torah portion of the book of Exodus, Shemot, it describes in great detail, I mean great detail, I mean great detail, the garments that the priests of the temple in ancient Israel wore. Great detail. Did I say that? One passage talks about the sign placed on the high priest's forehead. It read, Kadosh Ladonai, which means holy to God. One of my rabbis said, this is the model for how we treat each other. We look at each other as though on everybody's forehead is written, holy to God. And then finally, the early rabbis asked a question. How light must it be, as dawn is breaking, before you can begin morning prayers? And one rabbi says, well, when you can distinguish a white thread from a dark thread. Not very, you know, that's fairly dark still. Another rabbi said, no, when you can tell a green thread from a blue thread. But the word that, that the, the tradition came down, no, when you can see the face of the other, the face of the person you're praying with. And so that's how we go forward through these difficult and conflicted times. We remember that each of us is made in God's image, that each of us is holy to God, and that we find God as we look in the face of the other and have a relationship with them. Let us make it so. Thank you so much, Patricia. So compassion and mercy are cornerstones in Islam. We are called to begin everything good in God's name, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, embodied these characteristics and is a model for all of us. One time, there was a funeral process procession going by, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stood up as it went by and waited until it went completely by as out of respect for the person who had passed. After that, he was told by one of his companions that the person was a non-Muslim, he wasn't Muslim. But he responded, was it not a human being? Or in some translations, was it not a living being, a soul? Our faiths teach us that compassion and mercy is meant for all of God's creations. May everyone across the world be showered by God's mercy and compassion and the mercy of his fellow humans of and may we all embody mercy and compassion, starting with the people in our own lives. I mean. <laughs>